Greetings. We are going to have a tape on spring flowers. Uh, this is the plum blossom I'm going to do the first. I first and uh, then I join them with heavy branches down and here and here and here. And uh, since uh, this is the one done by me long ago, the statement being added. I make a circle in yellow in the middle and I have seven here, seven here, seven here. Uh, in general speaking, I follow my teacher uh, use this kind of a technique every time seven here and seven down here. And after the statement been done, then I will put uh, that side. And uh, I have to mention if you have seen my tape on plum, then you understand all this. Is that I have to have a clean brush uh, with clean water here. Then this brush is not too wet or not too dry. Uh, because I can tear, there's no uh, drop of water coming out. And also the tip is uh, very much pointed. Then I will take a little bit red. The red is on very much the tip of the brush. And by the way, we have to remember that if you're going to paint the flowers with a bright, clean, and uh, beautiful color, you have to paint flower first. Use clean water and a clean brush. Now I'm going to put on paper the first flower. I'll paint flower first. Plum always with the five petals. Now this is facing up. And now I'm going to make uh, five petals facing the viewer. It's uh, the top view. I'm going to make uh, very much the side view and I charge my brush once again 
can have a little more color for the young ones. I'm going to have another side view next to a front view. And here I may have one or two facing the viewer. Okay. Uh, I have a secret, meaning I arrange flowers such a way, following the principle of triangle, one and two and three, one and a two and a three, and one and a two and a three, and one and a two and a three. And one and a two and a three. Then after that, I'm going to show you the trunk. The trunk will be either here, or here, or here. But since I put the young ones on the left side, looks like the trunk better from the right side in. This is the broken old trunk. I will not uh, continue anything on this one. Then this flower will belong to the one from here. And uh, this group will Then the composition complete, done. I may have uh, some young ones here. Uh, spring is here, so you may see some young uh, leaves coming, but are not uh, everywhere, only a few places. After that, we're going to have a very dark red, almost black, for the stand. For this one, I will add, and here, uh, the stand cannot be seen. Okay, then after that, I Bring my brush again. I will put a yellow to the middle of the front view. Then, after that, a little brown, a little block for the stamen. Seven on this corner, seven on this corner, and seven on this corner, and here, and uh, to save time I will not uh, complete them. For this one, I'm going to finish them. Put the dots at the tip of each line. Okay. The second flower will be iris. Here's one I made uh, before. Actually this painting is from life, meaning I do have flowers in front of me exactly like this. The arrangement leaves surely added by me and uh, the bumblebee added by me much later. And uh, you can see there are some uh, 
darker place, some light place. Uh, the important thing is uh, the way of handle your brush. It's very clearly here. You can see the brush facing this part. The brush got a darker color at the tip and the lighter color after. And here, the second one, steer, important is the tip facing the center part. And uh, then you, I flip the brush for the other side. And this one is easier because the tip is facing up, just pulling down. And uh, this one is from inside out. And this one, because I almost used all the color. Then I charged again to have darker color on my brush, down, and down, and down. This one the same, with darker color at the tip, facing the center part, like this. And uh, I will show you how to arrange the leaves uh, afterwards. But to take a look of this uh, iris first. Chinese color got not to many different choices of red and the blue. And this one is a very dark blue mixed with blue. So there's no way to compare with the watercolor and uh, oil painting. But we like to have this kind of a color, purplish color, to represent all the purple. Now, now I'm going to mix color for my iris. First, I take quite a lot of blue. Then I take dark red. Then I got the, the purplish color. Then my brush situation is a very strong purple and very light and uh, very clean here. So I'm going to paint the now. This is the way. The hand is away from me, but the tip is facing the center part of the pattern. I discovered not too much changes, so I dip with a little bit of black. Now here I show spade hair. You see this part darker, this part lighter. I may add a, a drop of water. Then the second one here, I got uh, the open spaces here. Then I move from outside in, have this part open now. And usually they have one like this, and I charge with a little bit of water and I have a bunch of lighter color. Then tips they're facing the center part and I okay I will do the other one with the, the tip facing the center part of my petal and And surely these two patterns are a little bit more shortened, so I purposely make this shorter. And I mix once again color for the young ones. And here we go. After 
after that, we will have really pale purple for the lower part. And I will have a little yellow for the Then the little bit of yellow will continue to have color for the stand for the lower part of the flower. This is the young one I'm not open yet. And here the lower part. Okay, then after that I'm going to have then sometimes the a uh, little brownish thing fading. Okay, now I need uh, lots of uh, green. Sometimes I even just use black. are facing the center and uh, also in such an order from uh, large to small or from small to large and the turning now uh, gradually uh, spreading and uh, I think I finished the painting uh, or sometimes if I drop in care or the composition too much on one way, I may add some uh, ink set, like a bumblebee. Now let, let me show you one bumblebee here, or two. Then the body. I dry my brush once again for the then I will have very light gray it sometimes could be uh, greenish gray uh, you see they are very light suggesting the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the wings are moving fast and uh, a little running will be okay here 
I'm going to demonstrate how to paint the dogwood flowers. Dogwood in Chinese called Zhu Yu. It's a very famous flower mentioned by the poets again and again since uh, Han Dynasty, Dang Dynasty. There is something interesting the poems mentioning about the dogwood in China uh, will be uh, in full blossom during the fall. And the girls and uh, boys use this to decorate their hair since the ancient Chinese got a very long hair. And especially like Wang Wei's poem talking about uh, dogwood flower in very much detail about the purpose, where and how they put on it. And the dogwood in China is similar to the dogwood in the United States here. The only difference is the leaf. Uh, the uh, Chinese dogwood is narrower and pointed, with a, a narrow shape of the body and have a longer tip. The rest will be the same, for example, color wise or the arrangement like four. Now I'm going to show you how to paint. I will paint the white dogwood. That means the pattern will have an outline. I may use leave it the grayish green or just gray. Since I have a uh, gray green here, already plenty here, so I will just use them, make sure it's too, not too dark. Okay. A pause and a pause. You can put the, the other three behind become a side view. But at this time I will go to show one here and one here. So this is the uh, foreshortened. Then I will do this once again. Then I put then this one is a uh, closer. And I may have uh, once again This is a full open and you can looking down into it. Okay, then this is a, once again a side view. But this side view was two petals in front. Um, I'm showing you the four different kind of arrangement. Either very close together or have one foreshortened, or two foreshortened, and uh, all open. Now to finish my composition, I have a more side view one, and uh, I like to have one facing us. one side view again with two for shorten in front and uh, when it's front in front of us okay then after this we're going to have yellow and uh, a little bit of red or a little bit of orange for the center part. This cannot be seen. Okay, here. The center part done. Sometimes we clean brush and have a little bit grayish blue 
to have some action. So just the depth. And uh, many times we will have ground at the very tip of the petal. And uh, surely I learned this from my teacher, but later surely by observation. We do see the tip in brownish during the springtime when we have uh, Then we will have leaves. It very dark green. I use quite a lot of blue and a little bit yellow, so it's a uh, bluish green. Many times I still find it's not enough, then I put a black on it. This is important by having this one next to the white. Actually, we are sh showing more the white so people see. my brush here suggesting this is a curved one, a closed one. Then this part I need more leaves just to show the white petal. I think I Also like to mention the uh, branches of the <coughs> dogwood is uh, always a square, always with a right ankle. So we have to pay more attention to that, try to avoid that. suggests uh, the color is dark to suggest the leaf is a waxy hard you do not see too much defined lines as the secondary thing I finished this painting I'm going to show the close-up of the four flowers I just have done. On top here is uh, uh, facing up, and uh, this one is almost, next to it is almost the top view, and I repeat this once again here, and another side view showing the center part. The 
the branches are arranged in such a way, very randomly. Actually, I do not have any plan. Uh, the lower part, the brown, heavily down here, and with branches moving up. I say this is the characteristic of the uh, dogwood. They usually have branches 90 degree to both sides, uh, form many, many squares or rectangles. Now, the next one will be Westeria, one of the spring flowers. Westeria are uh, very common, uh, widely uh, appreciated by the Chinese gardener and almost every garden we see the Westeria. The Westeria got uh, two different kinds, one's almost like a tree, uh, the other kind is uh, the bush and with the van. And uh, this one showing here is the van. It crunched to the big tree or to the wall. And uh, again, we like to have a clean brush, clean water. We start with the flowers. And uh, the flower, uh, the darker one here, and then later when you run out of the ink, then you got only very light color almost just water. And this is the second one. We do it once again. And the leaves being added very close to the pear one just to show the contrast. And after that, we have veins and the branches. Now I'm cleaning my brush with clean water. And I have to uh, have very bright blue and with purplish red. And the mixture of colors is very important. I got enough for the first group of. Uh, now, because the color come too high. I like to rinse it. Then I see now my brush got only very light purple. Then take a little water. Okay. Now the young ones. the big ones. You see the color become paler and a paler and almost no more color. Then I will charge my brush once again. And here we go. The light will be later. Dark and the strong ones first because they are young. Okay, then beginning to have I may even dip into the water to have now you see my movement of a brush is down, up, down. This is the a flower, usually with a three petals. Again, I will show you once again. Down. One, two, three. Okay. Then I will have a yellowish green.
but surely we may say I see they are hanging down straight but uh, since the composition like to have a triangle suggest the movements are just growing and uh, we have to make it slanty and uh, okay after that we will have a uh, little bit of yellow to suggest the center part of the flower looks uh, clearly I leave certain spaces for this purpose okay then I will use the same green and with uh, He has very much like a weeping willow, a weeping willow branches. Then I know where the leaves will be. I need more green and uh, put a block at the tip of my finish the first group. Okay. Uh, remember, do not make them, I mean these leaves, too much same size. And also remember, do not have them parallel to each other. You see, I purposely make this part no leaf, and I have two small ones next to it. Change my mind instead of make this one down, I moved it up and I will develop this place. To have this one extended. I will put a 
veins for each. show you the enlargement of the flower I just made. The next one will be Chinese Magnolia. And here I made uh, one for you to see. Uh, in the north, mostly we have a manuknia in this shape. Outside dark color, inside white. But in the south we have a big one, a white one. And uh, because of the curved lines like this, uh, the Chinese language still call this kind of orchids. They call the tree orchids, or jade orchids, or purplish orchids. You still use the same, same term. And we have to have a, a pointed brush, a soft brush. The movement very close to the orchids for ours. to demonstrate. I said the uh, color must be clear and it must be the color you want. Now I have red mixing here and I have a little bit of oh, not enough. So I will do it again. Okay. This is enough for one flower. Since uh, I usually customly to make five petals, and this one will be the one in front. It's a very close, very much like a lotus. Another one here. And pay attention to the position of my hander, brush hander. some 
hairy things stick out. Okay. It's uh, too close to the pattern, so I'm not going to continue my leaves here. Okay, then I will have a uh, uh, big leaves here. Okay, now I'm going to have branches. The branch always a little bit uh, brownish. Meaning I do not have any idea how to connect them yet. Uh, Again, I said I need only one line to suggest the uh, mid rip. I will finish this uh, by showing you uh, another branch here with a smaller. Branches uh, extend to this side. I move my brush from the outside in. Uh, sometimes we may add a darker purplish line to indicate that the flower was sometimes not very clearly seen. The veins on the petal. sign here. I'm going to show you another magnolia flowers, white and very big. I just mentioned it common in southern China. These are very tall tree, similar to the one we have here in Virginia and North Carolina. And this is the outline once again, and the strokes very close to lotus. The arrangement also very close to lotus, and also with the tip here, similar to what we have the uh, dogwood. Uh, only difference is the leaves, big, strong, and heavy. We have an alkaline magnolia, uh, we still should have a greenish gray or a bluish gray for the outline. The brush must be not too wet but also not too dry. Now I'm mixing little red and uh, blue. And now I had uh, 
gray, greenish green now. Uh, my brush is quite uh, quite dry. Okay. This is foreshortened and this is a completed side view. To show the highlights and shadow, I will use a steer the same grayish green. To give some accent, for example here. Here. Uh, this will disappear quickly. Very light. Okay, and the young ones surely could be added uh, here.
when I say afforded one means uh, on a show a little bit to green, the uh, outside part will be brownish. I will show you one leaf here. And uh, another leaf coming down. See, uh, the tip carries very dark green or even just black. And I we we'll show one brownish someplace here. This is the other side of the leaf. This belongs to this, and this belongs to this. another one to break the monotonous here. A broken one. Uh, one in the other side. Okay, then the time now to put the uh, bins. Trust very very important. We have a little bit of gray here, suggests so that part is a deep, and we do not have any white here, suggests so it's a, a very much in front view. I missed one place. And sometimes, surely, a little light green. run over the open spaces will will have even more. Otherwise people may thought that was uh, two leaves. I'm going to show the enlargement of the flowers I made. You see, they are not only uh, the petals, many of them behind, but also show completely the uh, center part. And also I will show you the At the same time, you notice the leaves, the brownish is the other side of the leaf. The beauty must be because uh, the uh, stroke so free, and I add color such a way to let it run smoothly, such as the roundness of I will show you a real flower here in my hand, and uh, you see the front view, the side view, 
in the back view. And then I will make all of them uh, surely the side view and the front view. And uh, I will start with the orange yellow first. Then here, over here, over here. I mix yellow with my little bit red. center But 
not necessary all the way. Then we can just stop here showing the already cut the, to show the beauty of nature. I will have some use. This moment, surely, this color looks uh, much uh, darker, but it's um, not really. I will put a, a butterfly. At uh, the same time, I'm, uh, I'm going to wait. Until you see, this one's already much paler now. Uh, this is going to be the same color here. It's a much lighter. Now. You know this uh, this almost gone, and this part much paler, and uh, this is just right to suggest the shadow. And uh, outline white flowers, and also outline leaves. Uh, I will demonstrate once again. To show you how to do the flowers, you will notice that this one I made only five petals. Narcissus is supposed to have uh, six petals, but uh, my teacher said uh, five uh, more beautiful than the six. I will let you be the judge. And uh, sometimes we have yellow center, sometimes have green center. Now I'm going to show you how to do it. The first thing we have uh, the center part, just so randomly. And uh, I will have another group here. This is the center. I have the uh, arrangement of the flowers now. Then I will have uh, outline. The uh, outline for this one is a side view. Okay, then this one is the front. You're looking into it. And 
this one can be a reputation of the, the one next to it. And here we go, have another one. You notice I pause and uh, jump and pause again. And uh, here, this were facing the, to the right. This one will be in front. This type of uh, artwork is so important about the spontaneity, the freedom. But you will know, how come I have that much freedom? Because I have been practicing and practicing. This is the reason why. So the discipline, long time uh, exercise, give me freedom. So I can paint freely. I never worry about where the pattern will be. And uh, then after this, I will put a stamp. This is the procedure. We have to follow this. It's not right to have uh, any other way. Then we'll be continue the longer. Then apparently we're going to have uh, leaves also go this way. But at this time I'm going to not make a outline but a free stroke. So I need a lot of... Uh, I'm right-handed so the stroke horizontal to me I always from left to the right. Left to the right. from lower part up. I have to cover up this place. Surely the spontaneity means you move quickly freely. But also something important is uh, uh, the power being delivered to the brush. So I many times uh, jokingly say to my student, if you like to make a good paintings, you have to eat, sleep very well and eat a good breakfast so you have all the energy to do. And uh, surely you learn from your teacher how to do this. But the important thing still, you have to love the flower. You have to understand flower. Understand flower is not too difficult. It's at the knowledge point. Uh, you have to fear the beauty. Uh, the feeling means this part dry a bit and uh, loose. And this part is uh, shining, smooth, and strong. This kind of feeling you have to. And another thing I will say, you have to love nature. You have to love the flower. Without love, there would be nothing. You cannot paint the flowers in such, such a way. Then let's compare. I will show you this one I did uh, long ago. And uh, I will show more things I made one after another. This is uh, Daffodera. 
uh, you can see the shadow now become much lighter. And I will show you the dark wood. And I will show you. We just have a review. You can see when it dries, this part suggests it's a really wrong. And this also suggests the dimension. And uh, shadow here, shadow there. It's because my brush moved really freely, quickly, without any unwanted remarks. And also I did this. See the, uh, the strength from my brush, because I really know what I am doing. Uh, if you hesitate, if you do not know what you're doing, surely many places were considered as a mistake. And the last day also, the beginning of our tape is the plum blossom. The plum blossom, always the first flower of the year. the end of uh, our tape. Spring flowers is uh, uh, what I planned the first one. I'm going to make more like uh, summer flowers, autumn flowers, and winter flowers in the future. <laughs>